Hello everyone. Welcome to the Clark County Public Library program Summer Posse. My name is Miss Amanda and today I will be reading two short books and showing you a craft that you can make at home. First we'll be reading Carmela Full of Wishes by Matt De La Pena, illustrated by Christian Robinson. And today we're reading this with permission from Penguin Random House. Carmela scootered along the uneven dirt path, watching men stoop to work with their hands. Her birthday bracelets jingled and jangled. The thick greenhouse air smelled of marigolds and overturned earth and fresh manure. Carmela knew exactly what manure was, but she didn't want to think about that. Not today. Today she awoke to candles in her pancakes and her mom sang happy birthday to you and told her Go on, Miha, make a wish. But Carmela's wish had already come true. She was finally old enough to go with her big brother. Carmela followed as he cut back onto the street at Freedom Boulevard, past the crowded bus stop and fenced off repair shop past the old folks' home where two hunched old women waved smiles, past the huge home improvement store where her dad used to stand around weekend mornings waiting for work. Carmela tried to make small talk with her big brother as their metal cart rattled, but her brother didn't, make, didn't want to make small talk back. He didn't want her tagging along. Too bad, she told him with her glare. Just outside the laundromat, she picked a lone dandelion growing among the concrete weeds. She pulled a breath and leaned toward the fuzzy white bulb. But just before she could blow, her brother butted in. Did you even make a wish? You're supposed to make a wish. Everyone knows that. Of course I made a wish, she told him, but it was a lie. Carmela didn't know. Carmela helped her brother sort colors one-handed, helped him load the washers one item at a time. While their clothes spun, her imagination turned. Each new thought ushered in by a jingle of bracelets. Her brother found the sound annoying and shot her a dirty look. Too bad, she told him with her glare. She jingled her bracelets as she rode up to Miss Maria's vegetable, sink, vegetable stand, imagining a machine built into her bedroom wall one that would spit out anything she could think of, but mostly candies. She jingled her bracelets in line at the locksmith shop, imagining her mom sleeping in one of those fancy hotel beds she spent all day making for fancy guests. She jingled her bracelets at the bodega down the block from their old apartment building, imagining her dad getting his papers fixed so he could finally be home. She jingled her bracelets outside of the pharmacy, eyeing the shiny new bikes in the window. Her brother stopped in his tracks. Why do you have to be so annoying? She thrummed her bracelets at him and said, it's a free country. The only time she didn't reach for her bracelets 
was when her brother ducked into his friend's house. Carmela slumped down on the curb, silently imagining all the things she could turn him into. The slimy pink tail of a rat, a cockroach scurrying away from the light, a wheelbarrow full of manure left in the sun. She stared down at the dandelion in her hand. It seemed so much more important now that she knew it was a place to put her wishes. What if she made the wrong choice? Carmela tried to hop a curb on the long trip home, but her tire caught and her handlebars twisted and she went crashing to the concrete. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. But then she saw her dandelion crushed beside the drain. She looked up at her big brother, warm tears rolling down her cheeks. He lifted up her scooter. You okay? She shook her head and pointed. My wish. He took her by the arm and led her back up the block, past the laundromat and the flea market, past the greenhouses and the smell of manure, past the overgrown park and across the train tracks. He didn't stop until they made it to an, ab an abandoned farmhouse near a cliff overlooking the sea. Close your eyes, he said. Carmela closed them. Now make your wish, he said. Carmela listened to the ocean's hum in the distance. She listened to the squawking birds. She listened to the wind whistling past her ears. Then she opened her eyes. She saw hundreds of tiny white spores lifting into the air, floating out toward the far off surf. The sky was full of wishes. Let's go, her brother said. Don't you want to know my wish, she asked. He shook his head. If you tell, it won't come true. She looked back one last time. Then, off, then took off her bracelets and followed her brother home. The end. Next we'll be reading The Other Side by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. And we're reading this with permission from Penguin Random House. That summer, the fence that stretched through our town seemed bigger. We lived in a yellow house on one side of it. White people lived on the other. And Mama said, don't climb over that fence when you play. She said it wasn't safe. That summer, there was a girl who wore a pink sweater. Each morning, she climbed up on the fence and stared over at our side. Sometimes I stared back. She never sat on that fence with anybody, that girl didn't. Once, when we were jumping rope, she asked if she could play. And my friend Sander said no without even asking the rest of us. I don't know what I would have said. Maybe yes, maybe no. That summer, everyone and everything on the other side of that fence seemed far away. When I asked my mama why, she said, because that's the way things have always been. Sometimes when me and mama went into town, I saw that girl with her mama. She looked sad sometimes, that girl did. Don't stare, my mama said, it's not polite. It rained a lot that summer. On rainy days, that girl sat on the fence in a raincoat. She let herself get all wet and acted like she didn't even care. 
Sometimes I saw her dancing around in puddles, splashing and laughing. Mama wouldn't let me go out in the rain. That's why I bought you rainy day toys, my mama said. You stay inside here where it's warm and safe and dry. But every time it rained, I looked for that girl and I always found her somewhere near the fence. Someplace in the middle of the summer, the rain stopped. When I walked outside, the grass was damp and the sun was already high up in the sky. And I stood there with my hands up in the air. I felt brave that day. I felt free. I got close to the fence with that girl, and that girl asked me my name. Clover, I said. My name's Annie, she said. Annie Paul. I live over yonder, she said, by where you see the laundry. That's my blouse hanging on the line. She smiled then. She had a pretty smile. And then I smiled, and we stood there looking at each other, smiling. It's nice up on this fence, Annie said. You can see all over. I ran my hand along the fence. I reached up and touched the top of it. A fence like this was made for sitting on, Annie said. She looked at me sideways. My mama says I shouldn't go on the other side, I said. My mama says the same thing, but she never said nothing about sitting on it. Neither did mine, I said. That summer, me and Annie sat together on that fence. And when Sandra and them looked at me funny, I just made believe I didn't care. Some mornings, my mama watched us. I waited for her to tell me to get down from that fence before I break my neck or something. But she never did. I see you made a new friend, she said one morning. And I nodded and Mama smiled. That summer, me and Annie sat on that fence and watched the whole wide world around us. One day, Sandra and them were jumping rope near the fence and we asked if we could play. I don't care, Sandra said. And when we jumped, Sandra and me were partners, the way we used to be. When we were too tired to jump anymore, we sat up on the fence, all of us in a long line. Someday, somebody's going to come along and knock this old fence down, Annie said. And I nodded. Yeah, I said, someday. The end. Now I'm going to show you a craft you can make at home. A colorful pine cone bouquet. You'll need pine cones from your yard and some sticks or skewers to glue them on. And then you'll paint them any color you want. Thank you for listening. Bye.